Chris Matthews, my question to you is, should Nikki Haley stay in the game till the bitter end? Yeah, I think as long as she can get money. I mean, uh, money is the name in the game here. I think Ken Langone, the big Republican anti-Trumpers, uh, I think are still available. The Chris Christie crowd. I think she's going to she might not do as well as she hoped to do this Saturday, though. I don't think she's going to do better than she did in New Hampshire. I think it's going to be tough, but I think she's probably going to get close to 40 which is fighting. I think she's fighting it right now, and I think uh, she ought to stick in it. I think she's the last uh, non-Trump uh, candidate standing. Eugene Daniels, you were in South Carolina. Uh, give us a sense of what you saw on the ground there. Yeah, and I'm headed back tomorrow. You know, what you're oh. seeing is that <laughs> is that it is a completely different state than it was when Nikki Haley was the governor of that state, right? The Trumpism of the Republican Party is alive and well there, right? I'm, I'm driving around the community that my parents grew up in, and I'm seeing humongous Trump signs, not one Nikki Haley signs, and it shows his dominance there, right? And you talk to people who have worked for Nikki Haley, and as I have over the last few weeks um, in South Carolina, they say that she is not a woman, and we've seen this, who is who is going to quit, that that her tenacity um, is, is, is to the extreme, and more importantly for them, for some of those people who want to see her have a political future, that that could also possibly be her downfall here, and thinking about what does it look like post-2024 um, for her in this Republican Party, and I think the hope that she is having, and that people in South Carolina um, who want to see her continue, whether they be voters or operatives, is that there needs to be some kind of opposition to Donald Trump. She keeps talking about this country not doing coronations, but also, and, and more importantly, they're hoping that something might happen, right? There's all these legal cases against Donald Trump. Um, and so there, there, there's still a little bit of hope, a glimmer of hope that something may happen and he can't be the nominee and that she wants to be that person who can pick up the ball if it's dropped. So, Chris, it, Chris, it is uh, at times to be surprised by something that Donald Trump says. Um, but yet, over the last couple of days, he basically compared himself to Alexei Navalny, uh, not just because he has been persecuted, he believes, by the state. He suggests that, like Navalny, he is, he is a sort of martyr for the cause, if you will. And he even went so far as to say so about the civil fraud verdict uh, that was rendered in the last few days that will cost him $350 million or so. Just give us your, your sense on this, just where Donald Trump is and why, he, why would people respond to such a nonsensical comparison like that. You know, I think he's starting to realize that he doesn't know much history, let's face it. But he must be aware of the fact that the old Soviet Union, like the old Nazi party in Germany, was a tyranny. And people like Hitler or Stalin and his successors could knock off people, could get rid of people like Navalny. This is what the old communist world was all about. That's what they do over there. If you don't like your opponent, you get rid of them. You knock them off. And this is what we all remember about that, about that. I remember when Stalin died in grade school and the nuns came out and announced that Stalin had died and we should pray. And we know, I had no idea what we were praying mm -hmm. for, except we're happy he's gone. You know, he's the worst of them. He killed 20 million people. But this is what they do, these tyrants. Look at, the, look at those soldiers as, as, as Putin comes into his uh, office there with their heads back, that, and they're cocked back like that. How weird that is. How weird that... that uh, the, the dedication is, I guess you call it. Now, I think Trump knows this. This is why he lied about saying he's the new Navalny. You know, I think, you know the idea, the old thing, when fascism comes to America, it will be called anti-fascism. I mean, that's the game he's playing. But I think he knows, in his dim-witted way, that he cannot be on the side of, of, of this Stalinist regime that can knock out people like Navalny. Navalny's wife is out there as a leader of this organization now. She's going to fight. And I think he can, has a glimmer that he's on the wrong side. It's also on the abortion thing. I want to talk to Mika. But I got to tell you, Mika, this is interesting how he's fading away from this 16-week ban here. Because oh, the big please. question to ask about him is, okay, buddy, what's the consequence? What's the punishment? What's the punishment? Because you said right. you want to see some punishment for women. What will be your plan to punish women who, who disobey this 16-week ban? I think he's getting a little nervous about the craziness of the, the abortion ban. I think he's afraid of it. I think he's afraid of, the, of coming out for Putin against Navalny. He, this is the first time he's actually shown some at least conceptual 
problem a reality of his problem, which is he's lying. He's lying. The communists are not the good guy. This post-Stalinist world of Russia is not the good guys. The idea that Subway over there that Tucker Carlson is bragging about, that, that, that doesn't oh, make them the good guys. It's crazy. And I, I just wish some of the older people, older than him, older than Biden, who remember the Cold War, remember who the good guys were and who the bad guys were. Just say it. Why doesn't somebody stand up to him and say in South Carolina, you're wrong. The Soviet Union and what's come the, since then with Putin is the bad guys. They're the bad. Right. They're the well, true evil well, ones. And they won't. They, they got to stand up. I hope people will get behind uh, Nikki Haley, like going to people with money. Uh, and get behind her and really fight for this and say this is not the Republican Party, not just of Ronald Reagan, but going all the way back to Harry Truman. This was a bipartisan fight with the Soviets. And it's unbelievable they are out there kissing the butt of, uh, of well, Vladimir Putin. He, it's unbelievable. He, not the ring, but the butt. They're really acting like yeah. this, and it's awful.